This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to be looking at some techniques for lens corrections in both Lightroom and Photoshop. Here I've got an image that I took recently in New York City near the 9-11 memorial. And I took this with a wide-angle lens, and as we can see, we've got some strange angles going on here with the lines in the buildings. Quite a bit of lens distortion caused by my wide-angle lens. Now within Lightroom, once we've made our basic adjustments, we can go down to the Lens Corrections panel. And here in this panel, we have the feature called Upright, which is a relatively new feature in Lightroom. It's very powerful, and sometimes it does the job really well. Let's try it out here. I'll start with Auto. When I click on Auto, it levels out some of the horizontal lines, but we've got some strange things going on with the verticals. If I switch to the vertical mode, it still doesn't quite fill the bill. We've got some strange angles going on here. If I try full, that's not quite right. If I try level, it's still not quite right. So I'm just going to turn it off. And instead of trying to use the upright feature here in Lightroom, I'm going to switch to Photoshop and do the job there. What I'll do is I'll go into my library module and I'll right click this image and I'll choose Edit In. Then I'm going to open as a smart object in Photoshop. Now opening as a smart object accomplishes two things. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that within the smart object here in the layers panel, we can double click and get access to our original raw data and make our adjustments to the raw data. So we maintain the integrity of the raw image here into Photoshop. But the other advantage to smart objects is that we can create smart filters. And smart filters can be adjusted at any time after we're done making our edits, we can go back in and open those smart filters and readjust the values. And there's a filter that we're going to use here under the filter menu, and it's the adaptive wide angle filter. Here in this filter dialog box, which fills the screen, the first thing I'm going to do is choose from the drop down here, and I'm going to choose fit on screen so we can see the image. Now notice here in the lower left corner, this filter has correctly identified both my camera and my lens. So the adjustments that we're going to make are going to be based on the mathematical features of that particular lens and camera combination. Now the way this works is we're simply going to pick a line that should be straight and drag a guide right across it. And as I drag, notice that this line is curved. It's following the curve that's mathematically defined by the lens and camera. So I'll drag it all the way across this image, and when I let go, the filter will automatically make that a straight line. Now furthermore, I can drag this line around and adjust the angle, but what I want to do is have this horizontal, so I can simply right click and choose horizontal. Now it changes color to yellow, and that tells me that I've got a horizontal line. Now I can do the same thing here on the bottom. Here I've got a pretty curvy bottom of the image, but if I drag all the way across it, once again I straighten it out, I'll right click and choose horizontal. Now at this point the horizontals are looking pretty good, but we need to address the verticals. So let's start right in with this one. We'll go right down here and drop a line from the top to the bottom and once again, notice how it's curved, but as soon as I let go of the cursor, it straightens out. And then I can right-click on it and choose Vertical. Now that pulls that into a vertical line. I'll do the same thing over here where I've got some really twisty lines going on. We'll straighten that out, right-click, and choose Vertical. And we can continue working our way through the image dragging these guides out and straightening the image out. Here we've got a pretty big curve going on near the top. So once again, we'll straighten that out, right click, and choose horizontal. We'll just keep addressing these parts of the image until we get this image whipped into shape and looking the way that we want it to. We're just about there. I think we need maybe another one over here on the right hand side. I'll right-click and choose Vertical, 
and that's looking pretty good. I've still got a little bit more here that I could play with, add some additional guides, but you get the idea. Now at this point I've distorted the edge of the image, so when I click on OK and we go back into Photoshop as a layer, we're going to see some blank areas, and we can simply crop those down. We'll choose the Crop tool and drag this in a little bit, click the check mark, and we've got our image, and it's looking pretty good. Photoshop renders the smart filter after we've cropped it, and here's our image. Again, there's a few areas here that I might play around with a little bit more, but because I created this as a smart object, I have the ability to come over here to this adaptive wide angle filter, double click on it, and open this filter once again. So I can add some additional lines here on the left hand side if I want, and make this vertical as well. Again, we click on OK, and the filter returns the results back to Photoshop. That's looking pretty good, and if I turn this filter off, we can see the original, and if I turn it back on, then we can see the finished image. Quite a dramatic result, and accomplished with the adaptive wide-angle filter here within Photoshop. When you can't get the job done with Lightroom's upright feature, Jump over to Photoshop and try this filter out. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, photography, and Lightroom tips and tricks and related information there. Follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001 or find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.